All right guys, so before we start the vlog, today is an extra special day and you're gonna find out why in just a minute. Because today is a special day, I'm gonna do a giveaway to one lucky subscriber out there. So make sure you post in the comments below if you've subscribed to the channel. If today is your first video that you're watching, let me know that you subscribe below. You're entered to win a Donald Scott carving comb that we use in this video today to do the haircut. Also, as a bonus for all of you guys that have supported the vlog for so long, use the code MattBeckVlog at checkout out, you'll get 20% off any scissor purchases, Donald Scott carving comb, uh, some other tools that we have on the shop. So use that code at checkout, you'll get the 20% off. Let's get started with the vlog. Here we go. What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. Today's vlog is number 100. I've been working on these vlogs since last year in February, so really cool to hit the 100 mark. So today, I'm gonna show you guys the easiest bob you've ever cut. And we're gonna do it in very few sections. It's all condensed cutting and we're doing it with a carving comb. This is the end result, so it's a long bob lots of texture so you're definitely going to be able to use this in the salon it's going to be that quick technique that you're looking for but also giving your guests that shattered look so hope you guys enjoy it let's get started with our step by step here we go all right so we're going to start off by prepping the hair with donald scott prepare the cool thing about this product is it prepares the hair for cutting with a razor it gives you a little bit of control with your sectioning and adds a lot of shine to your end result so we're going to mist that all over the hair really focus it towards the ends to mid shaft where we're going to be cutting and then i'm going to start off my sectioning we're going to do a straight back vertical section all the way down center back separating the left and the right side and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to split the head in half so right at the division point high point of the head down to directly over the ear and separate the front and back so we basically create the four quadrants that we learn the very first thing that we learn in beauty school is to separate all those four quadrants. The great thing about doing that is you're really focusing on each corner of the head. So the way I'm gonna section off the two front quadrants of the head is I'm gonna go through and do a braid. And what that's gonna do for me is just get the hair out of the face, but also gives me a focal point of where the hair is gonna fall. So as I'm cutting the, into the back, I can kind of see where the hair is in the front. So we'll braid off this section as well. And like I said, this is going to be very simple, but the sectioning is really important. So if you don't do the sectioning correct, and then you go in and do this cut, you're not going to get the same result. So uh, these two sections in the back are the most vital sections because you want to go right at the occipital bone. So we're going to draw a vertical line down center back, and then we're going to draw across the occipital bone to behind the ear. Now it's really important that you focus on that occipital bone, and I'm going to kind of go through a couple scenarios here as well because if they had thicker, more dense hair, what I would do is still make sure that I'm working at the occipital bone, but I would ha have heavier strokes with the razor, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I would want to keep my sectioning the same, and the reason for that is because we're working off the bone structure of the head. So the occipital bone is where it kind of curves in, so the elevation that I'm holding the section uh, needs to stay similar, but the strokes of the razor are what's going to create more or less density uh, as we work through. So you'll see slight diagonal forward with that parting, two directly behind the ear, and then I'm going to add a little bit of prepare to this section as well. And I'm going to go through the carving comb. So this is the carving comb tool if you've never seen it. This one has wide teeth on it. It has a 50% cut side and a 100% cut side. So if you want to cut structure in a haircut, you can do that. And then on the opposite side of the carving comb, you're going to just debulk and take out weight, create layers. Uh, we're going to use both sides of the carving comb as we work through this haircut. So a couple key points to really focus on here is see how thick that section is that I took. It's about the width of the carving comb. This way I don't have to work back and forth on the section. And also, as I go in to cut, you'll see I have a nice low elevation on it. 
and I'm going about an inch back and forth with the carving comb, that's going to create a nice shattered line. But if I went heavier with that, it would create more of a layered effect. So what I'm looking for is to use the head shape. So if you see how the occipital bone kind of curves down, because of the angle that I'm holding the hair and that one inch um, kind of path that I'm moving the carving comb on, that's giving me more of a graduated feel. There'll be a little bit of layering towards the bottom, but we're going to go in and pinch cut that uh, at the end. You can see that bevel that happens, and that's all because of the head shape. So if I were to take this entire back down and do it, I could, but I would have to change my elevations a little bit. It's easier to break up the back into two sections. So occipital bone down, we have a nice low elevation, and now we're going to work occipital bone up to the high point of the head. So everything's going to come back towards me. Now you're going to see my elevation shift. You can see where I find my guideline from the bottom. So I just grab a piece just to check it. But this is a razor cut. It's got a little bit more freedom. There's going to be a lot more texture in it. So you see your guide, but it doesn't have to be exact. And you can see how those strokes on the razor are going to work and the elevation that I'm going to take this section up. So much higher elevation. The reason for that is you can see as it's coming off of the head, it's still working at a similar elevation to the first section. The head shape is just different and that it's more curved up. So I need to elevate the hair more. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with a really heavy result. And that's not what we're looking for in this cut. So literally, we cut that entire side of the head in two sections really quickly. Um, and that's what I like about this technique and the carving comb is it allows you to, the freedom if you're looking for a more textured look, uh, but still with structure, as long as you understand the head shape, you can go in and quickly do these haircuts um, and get a result that it would take you a while with scissors to cut a precision shape and then go in and texturize it a bunch to get this exact look when you can really do it in just a couple sections. So now we're going to comb out the side. And a key thing I want you to focus on here is you could cut this straight across if you want to. You can cut it more at an angle. This is really the, the client's preference or your preference, whatever you're working for. Um, but to go through, I'm going to add a little bit of an angle to the front because I like that disconnection. And then I go through and I use the 50% carved side to just add a little bit of layering and take out a little bit of the weight in the sides. If they had really dense hair, you could go in a little more aggressively with that as well. So we cut our angle and then I go in with the 50% carve side and just take out some weight. Now we're going to work with Paul Mitchell Fast Form. This is a, a quick drying product. So it's just something if I want to add shine to the hair and dry the hair quickly, I put this product in. We'll work it through, scalp to ends, and then once I get it in the hair, then I'm going to go through and brush it. We're using the Ergo Paddle Brush through the hair just to get the hair saturated every little bit with the product so we get the best result. Now we're going to work a flat wrap technique, uh, wrapping the hair around the head, adding that shine, getting the flexibility in the cuticle. We're going to create two different styles with this, more of a smooth style, and then I'm going to show you guys a style with a little more volume and texture at the end. So I want to have a flexible base um, and so that I don't have any calyx in the hair. And we're going to go through and do a little bit of dry cutting with the razor as well. So you'll see I'm leafing the hair, really focused on the base. So when you leaf the hair, you're pulling extra tension on the base of the hair, which is going to give you more control. And then I'll get uh, a more that flexibility that I'm looking for in the end result. Same thing in the back, so you'll see I'm brushing the hair up, but then I come back down. Um, you don't want to blow dry the hair in one direction. You also want to make sure that you never blow dry the hair and leave that parting in there. You want to go back and forth over the parting, and that'll give you um, an even consistency within the base. What I really want you guys to see in this part is uh, how that shape's really unfolding. So it's it has a precise look to it. It definitely has a textured feel. It's very soft, and I think that that's what a lot of people like about a razor cut is it's easy to style at home. Um, somebody cuts a more precision cut in your hair, it's, it's you know great for you to style in the salon, but when you get home and you go to style it, it's a little bit harder because you don't have that precision blow dry happening. So it's really nice to have that flexibility in the haircut.
So finishing up the last little bit, I want you guys to also see the shine, which is definitely coming from the Donald Scott Prepare and the Fast Form all at the same time. You're getting that kind of uh, glossy look, but also see how the airflow is passing over top of the cuticle. I want to make sure anytime I'm blow drying that I'm blow drying the air down and not roughing up the cuticle because that's when you lose the shine. This is hot off the press. This is a thermal protectant. So I put it in, I blow dry it into the hair for a minute, and then I'm gonna use my iron to go over top of that. So the hot off the press is really just a protectant for all this heat that we're putting over the hair. So sometimes I like to use a comb during my iron work, and then sometimes I use a brush. And in this case, um, the base and the mid shaft were really uh, nice and smooth. I didn't have to do a lot of work and because it's a textured feel to the look um, I just really wanted to polish out those ends but they didn't need to be completely straight and smoothed out. So I just go through with my paddle brush. Again we're working with a quick technique. This is something that not only is quick for a hairstylist but is quick for people to style at home as well. So I didn't want to get too fancy with how we're smoothing it out um, to show you guys that this looks good pretty quickly. So the last couple sections, you're going to notice that most of the time I'm taking diagonal sections to iron because that's going to give me the softest look. If I took a horizontal section across, you might see the end dent from the iron. So now I'm going to go in with my working spray, which is worked up. It's a dry hairspray, uh, which basically means that it's great for creating a little bit of texture. And also if you're doing any type of iron work or anything like that, it's got great flexibility uh, for that. So now I just put it in, give me a little bit of hold and control on the hair. And now I'm going to go through, again, this is a fresh blade on the carving comb from start to finish. So I can go through and do dry cutting because of that. If you think about a scissor, if we're doing slide cutting techniques, it's the same thing. But a razor blade is actually sharper than a scissor blade. Uh, it just is weaker, so it dulls quicker. So you want to make sure that you definitely have a fresh blade and then you can go through and just slide your blade through there and remove some of that bulk and and etch out the shape a little bit more so a little bit more worked up throughout it uh, you can see i flipped the top fringe over we cut it with a middle part so it allows that flexibility to go back and forth and then i go in with the extra body finishing spray when i finally got the look exactly where i want it and then i can set it into place so there is our end result. This, this is the smooth look to it. You could see all that texture built into it. Uh, very, very easy and quick to style it. And now what I'm gonna do is I wanna go in and use a curling iron on it real quick just to show you guys what that part uh, would look like as well. Uh, because this is a, a flexible look. It has that texture built into it. So it looks good straight or curly. Um, so we're going through, I'm just using the curling iron. This is an inch and a half curling iron and I'm going through and curling everything back off the face. Um, you can see how it already kind of gives those textured ends because of the way that we cut it with the razor. And I'm just gonna continue that same pattern throughout the top and the other side. So it's a really quick technique, um, but it gives you a really fun textured feel at the end. So I'll just run my hands through it a little bit. You'll see those curls come to life. The one thing that I want to shift from this style and, and why I'm kind of going in with the worked up because it gives me that flexibility uh, instead of going in with a finishing spray. And I'm just gonna take my flat iron and flat iron a few of the end pieces, which will give me that texture and separation and also elongate the style for the end result. So hope you guys like the style. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, and like always, if you liked this cut, then hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your friends out there. And for our special 100 episode uh, video, make sure that you let me know that you made it this far in the video. It means a lot to me. Thank you guys for watching. Also, if you're not a hairdresser out there and you were inspired by this cut and you want to cut like it, go to hairsalonlocator.com. We have all of our FSE partner salons on there. So you can get a haircut like this. People that train with us and work with us uh, throughout the country, throughout the world. You can find their salons on hairsalonlocator.com. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.